Hi, this is Dave with Tactical Hive, and uh, we're going to talk today about what it takes to become an airborne ranger and some of the uh, preparation things you can do to, to help increase your odds of successful completion of the Ranger Assessment Selection Program. Welcome back. Today's video is brought to you by Laser Ammo. If you dry fire a lot, make sure to check them out. Their products will make your training a lot more realistic and a lot more fun, so please check them out in the description below. So becoming an airborne ranger or passing the physical requirements to become an airborne ranger, what can you do? I, people talk about that and bring it up and have asked me before in the past. Uh, what can they do to best facilitate their chance of successful completion of RASP? Um, kind of a segue back, to, like a throwback, right, to this, this question. Um, during uh, the global war on terror, there was early portion in the, in the war and they were looking to mass produce soft guys, right? So across the board, they wanted more soft. And at one point, a bunch of, you know, 100 pound head dudes and head shriekers came down to the regiment and we all filled out, you know, bubble charts and all that stuff again. We did all those personality indexes over and over and over. And I don't remember a whole lot of, of really what the outbrief was, but I do remember uh, one key takeaway from that and uh, they, they set down the leadership from the from the battalion and they were saying a unique thing they recognized in the regiment is that uh the majority and you keep in mind 37.2 percent of all statistics are made up on the spot right but you know 90 percent of the guys in the regiment uh wrestled in high school uh, that was a pretty telling pretty telling thing for me to uh, you know again it wasn't 90 percent I'm, I'm making that up on the spot uh but it was a significant number of, of guys in the regiment wrestled. So think about what it takes to be a, you know, a high school wrestler and the dedication and, and the physical attributes and, you know, apply that into the physical needs and challenges and requirements you'll have when you go through RASP. That's a small portion of it. Uh, the, the physical portion, to be honest, uh, is there for sure, you know, but you can have the most physically fit dude in the world. If his mind isn't there, he'll never make it. Your mental toughness is the one thing that's going to set you apart from the rest. Your inability to quit. You're not done until you're, <laughs> you're laying down in bed for the night and then it starts all over again tomorrow. Having that mindset, you can build that mindset, but not everybody has that mindset. That's really what it takes to be successful uh, in, in that environment is that never quit, never surrender attitude. What is it Vince Lombardi said? Fatigue makes cowards of us all. And there's, that's the true statement. You, know, you think about a long run you've been on. Think about an, a challenging, enduring event that's, that's physical. And you're just like, I'm done. I am done. You know, and you're really not. And as long as you got a guy left and right of you, you know, like, okay, I, he's going, so can I. But physical exertion makes you want to quit. And you got to have the mental toughness to not a lot of people will tell you, you know, get your feet in shape, road march and hike and walk and do all those things. Man, you're going to have time for that. The Army has a system for that. It's called basic training in AIT, right? So you're going to go through all those requirements that are going to break your feet in. It's going to break your, you know, can you say yourself our success in basic training? Certainly. Can you go in with your feet already, uh, you know, conditioned to, uh, you know, road marching? You know, a 15-minute mile for 12 miles? You know, that's a good benchmark to have. Uh, and then from there, start adding your weight to it. But if you don't, like I said, the Army has that system in place. You'll go through BASIC, you'll go through AIT, and then you'll go to RASP. In the selection process, when you finish RASP, at the completion of that, you'll go to Airborne School, and then get, you know, upon successful completion of that, uh, you know, assignment to one of the geographically dispersed battalions. There's no secret sauce to it. It's set yourself up for success the best you can in physical conditioning, cardio, and in mental, you know, mental toughness. The more you can do, the better you'll be. When it comes to questions, again, of, of how do I best prepare for, for a ranger regiment, life and ranger regiment, you know, and, I, and all these people with really well-intentioned plans, you know, they want to go to the range and shoot. They want to go take first aid classes. They want to take land nav classes. They want to do all these things. And I get it. 
and and I support it. Uh, certainly, I, I would never tell someone don't get trained and don't go do something like that. You don't have to do those things in order to go through the selection process and be successful, right? Now, what I will tell you is by by doing some of those things, going to the range and being familiar with shooting already, already understanding land navigation, understanding basic first aid, and little things like that will help take some of the pressure off of you as you're trying to cram all this additional information into your head. It's one less thing that you have to really focus on because you already have a, a leg up on that, right? So those are things, those things will help you, but they're not going to guarantee you successful completion. That's gonna, at the end of the day, come down to heart. With all those additional training things we discussed and all that, uh, you know, that you don't necessarily need to have, but are good to have. Uh, I think one very overlooked thing you can do is understand how to best recover. Understand how to treat blisters. You know, and if you're doing, if you set up benchmark and say, hey, I want to be able to do 12 miles in three hours or less with 45 pound rucksack. That's, that's the, that's an EIB standard. That's, that's a, that's a standard you're going to have to meet, Right. The problem is if you don't work your way up to it, you run the risk of having injury. You run the risk of shin splints. You run the risk of a, a host of, of ailments, you know, um, on your wheels. So that slow incremental pace to get there and in that incremental pace and in your discovery of, of where your thresholds are for that road march, you're also going to learn how to treat blisters. You know, what works and what doesn't work, what works for you. You're not going to have the broken in boots you went through your your personal training piece when you join the army when you're going you're going to have the ones the army gives you so you can treat your feet though and prepare your feet and know when you get those when you get those deep blisters how to handle them and how to not sustain more significant injuries to your shins and to your tib fib type stuff so in conclusion if you have an aspiration to be an airborne ranger and have a successful assignment to one of the ranger battalions uh, you know my advice to you would be train what you can where you can be physically and mentally fit and understand how to take care of your body and recover uh, as best you possibly can. So if you like this content, if you like information like this and you're having an aspiration to go into a regiment or something like that and you want more detailed information, uh, consider giving the War Room a look. We'll have new opportunities coming up in the, in the coming weeks and uh, it gives you direct access to uh, myself and a lot of the other subject matter experts uh, here on Tactical Hive. So again, if you like this, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.